Hi, this is Greg McCoach, editor of The Mining Speculator. I'm here today with CEO Dave Cole from EMX Royalty. We're here at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver, Canada, January 2023. Dave, welcome to the, the interview. Great to be back in Vancouver, Greg. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, it's, it feels feels good to get back with everybody. It's, it feels sure like does. it's been a long time, but uh, uh, onward and upward. So a lot to talk about. You have so much we could talk about for, for an hour easily, but we have less than 10 minutes. So let's focus on the highlights. Uh, I want to start with uh, increasing cash flow, increasing royalties. You know, Greg, um, it's great to see this portfolio really start to perform after having built it for 20 years. And uh, we have 266 mineral property positions worldwide, many of which we grew through our uh, royalty generation, right. which is our forte. That's what right. people know us for. We acquire the prospect of mineral rights, add value, sell them, keep royalties, build that base of pyramid. But we also buy royalties. We've tried to focus on more advanced royalties to purchase to put at the top of the pyramid. And now we're seeing the, the cash flow coming in from those. And so we're very excited uh, about that. Yeah, and I tell investors, you know, I get all the, like at a show like today and tomorrow, I'll have dozens of people coming up to me, Greg, which which company should I talk about? I said, well, EMX Royalty. Oh, I it's, appreciate that. It's the easiest company to point to because the chances of having success are as robust as they get on this floor, right? You, you outclass everybody in my view. Well, that's a, that's a great compliment. Thank you so much. Uh, we've been working hard at it. Yeah. And it's the royalty model. Don't you agree that? So the royalties are phenomenal financial instruments, Greg. Yeah. Uh, they have such immense embedded optionality. Of course, we all want commodity price optionality. You right. and I were talking about that right. previously. We all, we all want to be exposed to gold right. for all the obvious reasons. Right. But we also want to be exposed to copper and other metals. Uh, early in my career, the only metal most people cared about with respect to going out and exploring was gold. Now it's half the periodic table. Yeah. As more and more metals are being consumed in our society and, and that demand growth is, is really right in front of us. Right, right. And one of the big storylines, and I, I think you're going to be making a press release coming up, um, there's, there's a particular property, I'm sorry, I forget the name of it, uh, there's, these are from Serbia. Timok. Timok, yes. Timok there. Yeah, the Chukuru Peki mine. Yeah, yes. there you go. Uh, some of these you have to really kind of double look at them to make sure you're pronouncing them right. But uh, anyway, why don't you focus on that? Because I think yep. that's a highlight that we need to make. Yes, and, uh, and it is a cloud over our stock. So let's just talk a little bit about the history about how we got into Serbia. It was one of our first business units. We came into Serbia, we acquired mineral rights, we sold them, we kept royalties. But we also bought some royalties. So we had our ear to the railroad track. We learned early on that there was a major discovery going on right off the boundary of one of our royalties. Um, and that became the team of discovery, which is now the largest copper gold deposit found and put into production in the history of Europe. Wow. And it's owned by yeah. Xinjiang. Xinjiang, Xinjiang is a large state-owned enterprise. Uh, and they have a memorandum of understanding signed with the Serbian government and have invested half a billion dollars or more into infrastructure. And it's in production. There was a royalty over that property which I was able to buy for 200,000 Canadian dollars wow. Right? Wow. years ago. What a um, score. And what a score, right. But it did have the ability for the royalty to be diluted. And um, Xinjiang's interpretation is that it was diluted. Our interpretation is it is not diluted. Right. And so we are in a negotiation and this negotiation has taken a long time. And of course the market is yeah. is losing patience. Any uncertainty uh, always causes yeah, some absolutely. conservation. But, you know, I'm, I'm confident it will get solved and we yeah. will make a press release. Uh, and it will become a substantial cash flowing royalty for us in the future. I'm looking forward to that one. It, it's commodities I know you love, copper and gold. Oh boy, I tell you what, you know, I I could see your stock price in a higher, like if we go to where I think gold's going to a new high here this year, uh, and copper as well going, going much higher, um, my goodness, that would be a huge uplift in your share price. And our largest cash flowing royalty right now is Casarones, which is also a copper mine in Chile operated by JX Nippon. Yeah, very pleased to see that cash flow coming in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's a it's a model that's hard to beat if you're looking to be an investor in mining shares. Uh, it's so, you know, we can all do uh, financial engineering and figure out what a royalty is worth based upon its projected cash flow into the future, and they trade at premiums in the marketplace. And everybody understands that the real reason why you want to have a portfolio of royalties is discovery optionality. Right. And those discoveries can come deep within the pyramid. And what I'm particularly excited about it at EMX is the continued discoveries that are being made at no cost to us. Right. Oh, that's... All the money that's being spent across our portfolio, 30 to $40 million a year in drill money going into our portfolio on behalf of our counterparties, creating that discovery optionality around the world. Yeah, I don't see anybody else that's 
exercising this model better than you guys. Thanks I mean, a lot. It is obvious that you've done a wonderful job, not just for a few years, but over a 20 year period to get to the point because so much about royalties is when does it cash flow? When does it cash flow? How does this get to that critical point where, you know, and I think you're there. You're I, there. I think you are at yeah. that that critical moment. I what is it? 50 million. They always say that hmm. the benchmark mm -hmm. of royalty cash flow or something. Um, that's a that's still a little ways ahead of us, but yeah. we'll get there. But you're you're clearly on yeah. that path in my view. Yes. You know. So, no, that's exciting. So, um, anything else? We, we've got a couple well, more Well, the Leeville mine, oh, okay. which is a gold deposit uh, where we have a royalty operated by Barrick and Nevada Gold Mines. Right. That royalty's been paying for us nicely. Barrick continues to announce exploration success uh, within our footprint and immediately adjacent to that. Delighted to see that growth. The big, uh, we talked about deep portfolio discovery optionality. The big discovery that South 32 has made on our claims in the Taylor district, which they call the Peak Project. That's a copper, zinc, silver. System. And where's that? That one? That's in southern Arizona. Southern Arizona. Okay. Yeah, you know it as the Taylor deposit. Taylor, right. At Arizona Mining. So we have right. the, a royalty on the extension of that deposit, and it zones from a lead zinc silver system right. to a copper zinc silver system on our property. Yeah. Great example of discovery optionality. And we sold that those claims years ago for a 2% royalty and some cash payments. Yeah. And now they've made a big discovery. Yeah, no, I remember that one. I was involved with that. We made money on that one. Uh, mm -hmm. at Arizona Mining, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it was it was one metal, and then they found the other deposit there. Mm -hmm. And there, there was two two resources there. That's quite exciting. But yeah, no, that's a. I love that whole area. You know, I spent a lot of time on site visits in Arizona and Nevada over the years. You have anything else in Nevada? That you yeah, it's, in fact, um, Chad Peters at Ridgeline. Yeah. just announced a nice discovery hole of the similar style of mineralization as at Taylor, which what we call a carbonate replacement deposit, yeah. high grade lead zinc silver uh, within our royalty footprint on that property, which we sold to Ridgeline many years ago. Really? And that press release came out yesterday, I believe, or the oh, day before. Oh, I haven't yesterday. even seen that, so we'll yeah. have to check in. Nice but... hit, nice hit. Very good silver numbers. Wow. You like silver? I love silver. <laughs> <laughs> Cheapest <laughs> asset on the planet. <laughs> Yeah, we all want to be exposed to silver. Yeah. That's no. another example of deep portfolio discovery optionality right there. There you go. Well, I, I just, there's so much more we could talk about, but I like to keep these things short and sweet. And I think, you know, we've accomplished what we set out to do in this interview. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that uh, as far as I'm concerned, EMX is a company that's on the top of my list always and has been for a very long time within my newsletter. So, Dave. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for being here. My pleasure.